Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of Abu Huraira that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Islam began as something strange and it shall return as being something strange. So good news to the strangers. They feel strange. They feel strange when they look around and they see their fellow Muslim brothers and sisters with their greatest aspirations in life to receive the reassuring nod of acknowledgement from society, from parliament, from friends, from social constructs. They feel strange because all they want is the acknowledgement of the king, Allah, the sovereign, and the prophetic nod of acknowledgement on the day of judgment. They feel strange when they see their Muslim brothers and sisters jumping through every hoop and wearing every mask to fit in, to not be labeled as a stranger. But for them, they hold on to their principles and values, even if it rocks a few boats along the way. And that is because society is always drumming into their heads and saying to them, you can't fit where you don't belong. So they've given up trying to fit in at the expense of their principles, and they have chosen to not compromise. They have chosen to inhabit planet Earth on their own terms, on their own conditions, as practicing Muslims who will not compromise. Being a gharib, a stranger, does this necessarily equate to helplessness and weakness, and living on the fringes of society? Let us take a look. Islam began as something strange. Islam began with a woman who supported her husband, Khadija bint Khuwaylid radiyallahu anha. Islam began with a Siddiq, a man of truth, Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu. And Islam began with a child, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu. The entire Meccan society had labeled our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a madman, a magician, a soothsayer, a poet. They, however, put their hands in his, acknowledged his prophethood and vowed to live and die upon his cause. They were strangers in their community. And they had values and principles that were incompatible with the Meccan society. They were strangers and they were persecuted. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I was subjected to fear at a time when nobody else was afraid. And I was harmed in the path of Allah at a time when nobody else was being harmed. And I remember a time when 30 days and nights passed by. 30 days went by with no food to eat for me and Bilal except what little food he was able to smuggle for us under his arm. Allahu Akbar. Suffocated in the path of Allah. Dust thrown in his head in the path of Allah. The intestines of animals placed on his neck in sujood in the path of Allah. Boycotted for over two years in the path of Allah. Ghurba. Alienation at its worst. This lasted for around 13 years in Mecca. Then they went to Medina, as you know, and here this began to mark the rise of Islam till Allah established his religion on the earth and the light of Islam would shine to all four corners of the earth and the justice of Islam would be celebrated globally. And finally, Allah had released the Muslims from these shackles of ghurba being strange. They were no longer strangers. With what you have just heard, we have just addressed a very common misunderstanding when it comes to the topic of ghurba being strange as a Muslim and accepting that. Being strange does not mean helplessness. From his example, who was a gharib, alayhi salatu wasalam, a stranger, but was a man of meticulous planning and hard work and staying up at night and mingling with society and community service, we understand from his model that being a stranger does not mean uselessness, does not mean being weak. When you say gharib, a stranger, you think of a man who is living somewhere on the fringes of a, of a community, silent, imperceptible, invisible, minding his own business, jobless, useless, weak and meek. This is the image. Disheveled, uh, untidy, with no money, no status, no contribution. Nah, this is not the understanding of being gharib from what you have just heard. The gharib, stranger, is a doctor, is an engineer, is a lawyer, is a businessman, is a taxi driver, is a painter, is a laborer, is a teacher, is a mother, is a homemaker, is an artist, is an influencer, is a sportsman. These are ghuraba. They are innovators in their society, participants in the mujtama, the community. They give, they serve the ghuraba. They're amicable, they're lovable, they're admirable. They have friends and families. They have dreams and aspirations and ambitions. The only thing that makes the gharib, the stranger, different to others is the state of his heart, her heart. They feel that they are not totally in par with the dictates of society. Their hearts burn with pain when they see Muslims abandoning the masjid. They are upset when they see their brethren losing their Islamic identity. And so when they are alone with Allah at night, they weep to him and they beg for his help. 
and to awaken their brothers and sisters. But by day, when the sun rises, they are back into the community and their voices will not be silent. And they are servicemen and service women in the cause of the religion and in aid of people. These are the Huraba. It is not a title of weakness and shame and uselessness and joblessness. After all, Amir al Mu'minin Abu Bakr was a gharib. He was a stranger. But how did he understand being a stranger? He was a merchant. He was affluent, prosperous, comfortable financially. He was part of his society. He wasn't pushed out to the peripheries. Abu Bakr giving loans to the needy, spending on the poor, purchasing slaves, emancipating them back as free men into the community, loved by the people for the most part. This is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, and he was a gharib, a stranger. Amir al-Mu'mineen Umar ibn al-Khattab was a gharib, he was a stranger. Principles and values different to others, but he was eloquent in his speech, decisive in his opinions, imposing in his presence. Who dare confront Umar radiallahu anhu when he thought something wrong was wrong or something right was right? Gharib, but part of society, contributing and reaching the top in his game. So this is the understanding of being a Gharib, dear brothers and sisters. Who are the Ghuraba? I conclude with some descriptions given by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to see if you fit the description or not. Because feeling alienated and estranged is not enough as an indicator. There are signs. Hadith number one. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, who are the strangers? He said, they are the ones who stay righteous when people become corrupt. Hadith number two, at tirmidhi narrates on the authority of Amr ibn Awf that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, who are the strangers? He said, the strangers are those who rectify the sunnah that people have corrupted after my death. Hadith number three, who are the strangers or messenger of Allah? This hadith is in the Musnad of Ahmad. And he said, they are righteous people amidst many evil people. And those who reject them are more than those who accept them. So they are righteous people. Number two, they call to righteousness. Number three, they are rejected by most people. These are the strangers and so good news to them. Good news to our sister who walks the earth with her hijab in dignity, who breathes life into values that are dying today like chastity, purity, haya, modesty. Good news to her. Good news to our sister who has not buckled under pressure and acquiesced and is content with the religion of Allah. Good news to her. And congratulations for being a stranger, though in the eyes of Allah, she is no stranger. Congratulations to our Muslim brother who does not compromise on his salah, who has not disintegrated as a weak identity Muslim, who lowers his gaze and protects his private parts from haram and only eats from halal sources of income and befriends the finest of people. Congratulations for being a stranger, though in the eyes of Allah, you are no stranger. And congratulations to those who have only one version of themselves to present to the world. Practicing Muslim of an unapologetic identity, never sandpapering parts of your religion to be part of a herd. Congratulations. As Imam Ibn Qayyim said, these are the family members of Allah, and so they are no strangers.